Hey, how you doing there again, folks? Me again, of course, Brandon Wenzel. Come back at you, another offering off my sampler platter. <sighs> yes, indeed, folks, I'm playing a video series of videos I've been doing for a while now, where I go over there to have food and drink items. I eat the stuff, I drink stuff, then I talk about the stuff, folks. I'm gonna let you know all that you need to know about hopefully delicious crap that uh, I'm gonna go over there, I'm gonna try out in the video, and then I'm gonna talk about. That's what I do. Whilst I'm doing so, got Pier Can Thunderbolt posted behind me, got some Marvel figures up there, crappy old ladders off to the side, okay? So he's there. One day he may be gone, but we'll see. At this point, he's as much a part of the show as anything else. So, we'll see how it goes. On top of all that, I'm wearing a cool shirt. When I wear a cool shirt, folks, I like to go over there and show off the cool shirt. So what cool shirt am I wearing today? Boom! Boom! It's a little hard to see. Power Man 5000 shirt! If you're not familiar with Power Man 5000, uh, they are a band. They've been around for quite a while now, since uh, at least the 90s. I yeah, definitely got to be the, the the latest, the 90s, sometime. But uh, the lead singer is actually the, uh, Rob Zombie, his half-brother. And this is his band. He's been trucking along for a very long time. They've changed up styles a whole bunch of times over the years. But their heyday was as sort of like an industrial, kind of like weird sci-fi uh, new metal band. You know, I don't, I don't know if that's exactly the label that they'd like to go by, but uh, I really love that period of time. I love that album. Their other albums are a little bit hit or miss, but they've got some really good jams. And uh, the time I'm doing this video, just a few days ago, I actually got to see these guys in concert. They're actually touring with Static X, Mudvayne, and Rob Zombie. They were the openers. They did a great job. And uh, I decided to go over there and buy some merch, because I love buying band merch. Buy band merch, folks. If you go over there, and whether you go see people live in concert or not, definitely, if you can, pick up some merch if you want to support your artists. I'm just saying, don't with the Spotify. If you want to listen to Spotify, that's fine. But if you want to actually support the band, go to their website, you know, buy things from them. But anyway, and if you happen to be interested in some of my tour shenanigans... Actually, a video of the shows that I've been to, and I, including this one, including some Power Man 5000 stuff. Anyway, what am I trying for y'all today? You don't care about Power Man 5000. Well, folks, we're doing a we're doing a comparison video here, folks, because we got boom, honey, boom, it's upside down, boom, honey. Not just any fo honey, folks. This is uh, both of these are raw honey. Okay. This one right here is organic, great value, U.S. grade A raw honey. Rainforest strain product of Brazil. Okay. Then, on this end, we've got raw and unfiltered honey from local hive Great Lakes. Uh, support the American beekeeper. So, these folks are all about America. These folks, who, if you're not familiar with uh, great value, that's Walmart's brand. Apparently, they're all about Brazil. I'm not saying one way or another. It's, that's just what's on the bottle. Anyway, uh, the reality is, though, folks, I'm not doing these to compare just these two. Like, in fact, the real reason why I'm doing the video is because there's a third entry into this here comparison. And it's a pretty unique one, folks. Because we've got, boom! Honey! <laughs> what kind of honey is this, folks? Well, it's honey in a mason jar. Uh, it's honey in a mason jar, specifically from one of the maintenance guys who I work with. He's this awesome Polish guy who, he's like one of the most interesting human beings you could ever talk to. And he's a hell of a nice guy on top of that. And uh, just, you know, amongst all the other things that he does with his time, he has his own beehive. And he recently started going over there and collecting the honey and decided to go over there and uh, sell some of it to, you know, folks that he works with. Every person I have talked to who has gotten some of his honey, has raved about it. Said how fantastic it is. So, finally today I had the money, he had the honey. We got some, we got some honey. Now that's also specifically the reason why I did the, the raw honey. Because this is as raw as it gets. This is, this is straight from the fucking hive, man. This is no processing, no anything, just there you go. I figured I'll go over there. I'll do a unique comparison video because this is the first time I've done a video where it's not like a from a brand or anything like that. It's just this is from a dude I work with. So I don't know. I think it's kind of a neat concept for a video. So we're going to try it out, folks. We're going to try it out. 
And I decided to do sort of a range because <clears throat> on the one hand, you've got the grade value one, which was a little over four bucks. It wasn't the lowest I could have gone on honey. I could have gone the, the straight to the bear grade value honey, which was, I think, like maybe a, like a buck fifty or two bucks or something like that. So about half what this was. But with it being, you know, raw honey, I figured I'll at least give it the best possible chance that it can. And then on the other end of the spectrum, this was about twice as much as this. It came in almost double. It was about eight bucks or something like that. So basically double the amount. And I don't know if it was like the top premier raw honey I could have gotten. There were a couple others that were more expensive, but they also seemed to have more volume. So I figured this would be a reasonable range. And then we've got uh, the the homemade honey over here. So I'm going to start from what I'm going to presume is the bottom with the great value. And then we'll kind of work our way up to uh, this guy right here. So a uh, little caveat, I went to do this video just a little bit ago and uh, I had to start over because when I went to open this up, I had one of those little like plastic pull tabs to get the, the thing off for the freshness seal the tab just came straight the fuck off, and then I had to fight with the thing, and I, I just decided to start over. So I took off the tab on this one, and I took the tab off on this one. This one was easy as shit. So I don't know what that says about, I don't know if that's good or bad for Walmart versus the other people. But we're going to give some honey a shot, folks. We're gonna give some, we got a spoon. Spoon! If you're old enough to remember that, you're technically my demographic. So you can see, we got some honey. It's looking very honey delicious. I mean, it, it looks like honey. I can't say it's, at least visually. I'm not, uh, I'm not getting anything other than it, it looks like honey. The smell is very faint. Very faint. Which, I've had some fragrant honey before, so I, I'm imagining... You know, you know, we'll see how it goes, but I have to admit I'm going into this with the assumption that this probably is going to be some, you know, kind of lackluster honey. But let's give it a shot. You know what? Despite the lack of fragrance, it actually has... A lot of flavor. I'm genuinely surprised by that. It almost has a uh, almost like sort of like a bourbon or or like almost like kind of a whiskey taste to it. I guess that's sort of like the raw aspect of it. It's not as typical honey. Like just the basic stuff is just it's very sweet. You know, it, it that's the the role that it's there to play. This there is more of a harshness to it. There's almost like a it's still sweet. But there's almost like an accompanying, like, savory or almost bitterness to it. It's not bitter. I wouldn't go as far as to say that. But it's definitely different. Like, it, that is definitely a different experience than just, like, the, the bargain basement typical honey that you would get. So I have to say I am surprised. I was not expecting much. But as a, as a first go, that was actually surprisingly good. Yeah, I mean, I I could, I you know, yeah, yeah. G good on your great value. You've surprised me. Now, how you're going to compare to the others, I don't know. But in terms of otherwise, you know, the overall experience, um, it did feel a little bit, I'm not going to say, I don't want to say watery, less thick, I'm going to say, than like standard honey. Uh and maybe that's because I have found that like with uh, like with maple syrup, like organic maple syrup is, at least in my experience, a couple times when I've had different brands, it tends to be it's still syrupy, but it tends to be a little bit more runny than like the you know your Aunt Jemima's and what have you. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, I, I don't know if that's just because of the lack of processing, but like I said, I wouldn't say it was watery, just maybe a little bit less thick. So, that's contest number one. 
surprisingly high marks for, you know, being the what I feel is probably going to be the weakest entry. A little bit of a palate cleanser. And as you can see, the spoon is thoroughly clean. So, let's move on to the uh, Local Hive Great Lakes Honey. Let's see. Let's see how it stands up, folks. It's from the Great Lakes. Yay. That immediately has a much more fragrant smell. Uh, and, and to be fair, as soon as I went over there and I opened this one up, like got the freshness seal off, I could smell it even then. So let's see how you compare. Ooh, okay. I feel like this one, you know, and I, we'll, we'll see how taste-wise, I feel like this one is a little bit thicker than the other one. It also seems to be holding its shape better, whereas the the other one, it kind of, you know, it started to spread out. I mean, this one is a little bit, but that one I feel was a little bit more apt to kind of move around the spoon. This one, yeah, when I, you know, bent it forward, it started leaning in that direction, but it's still kind of trying to keep it sort of, you know, most raindrop you know, shape, so. And it definitely, it definitely has a uh, much more fragrant smell. It definitely smells more like honey, so. It's definitely thicker, for sure. Um, when I went to go lick the other one off the spoon, I was pretty much able to get it all in one go. This one, I mean, yeah, I, I did mostly clear it, but like you can see, like there's still a fair amount of residue. So this is definitely going to be one where, and yeah, like I'm having to actively kind of work to get the, uh, the rest of it off. Um, interesting. So it's not, it's not what I expected. Um, I, cause I mean, there's definitely more going on than the, uh, the great value honey, but the thing that's interesting about it is that it was surprisingly also sweeter. And I, in my head, I kind of had it as an idea, like, you know, I knew it was going to taste different, but would it be, I, I felt you know, typically when you have like more artisan stuff, I feel like they tend to lean away from the things that are most kind of like um most appealing to the general public about them so i figured it would be a little no pun intended be a little bit less sweet and more kind of but it, it actually yeah definitely sweeter than the uh the great value i'm actually going to do a second go on this one just because with the other one with the great value i feel like i kind of got everything from it with just the one thing with this one, I don't feel like that's the case. I feel like there's there's more to this. Um, and it says apparently it has floral notes, alfalfa, aster, brass, or yeah, bra or basswood, clover, and goldenrod. I, I folks, you gotta have a palate way above mine to be able to to discern all that, but. Man. Hmm. There's definitely more. Man, it's so interesting. It's there's more of and this is gonna sound a little bit, you know. Uh, contrived, but it tells a little bit more of a story than uh, than the Great Value one. The Great Value one has an interesting flavor, and it I would actually argue it might have a little bit more of a punchy flavor to it, but it's very blunt in what it's presenting. It it has in kind of an interesting element to it, but it's you're getting it all in one go. With this, I feel like it's not quite as punchy in the flavor. It's a little bit more subtle. 
but you do get kind of a ride with it because it's not even though it is sweeter than the the other one it doesn't immediately start out that way it does have more of a more of a subtle start and but it pretty quickly tapers off and then it becomes sweet and it's it's definitely still a honey sweetness for sure but it does it does taste different than like typical honey but it is weird because if you were to ask me which of the two of these I thought was closest, quote unquote, to like typical honey, I would say probably the, the local Great Lakes one just because it does have a more profound sweetness. Like I said, I, I you know, it, it feels a little bit more like honey to me than the, the great value stuff. So interesting. Not what I was expecting. So, but now we're going to go, we're going to get to the real deal, folks. The the reason why I'm here, okay? Giant jar of honey. All right. Let's open this up. There we go. Right off the bat, that is definitely the, mo the, definitely the most uh, fragrant by far. Yeah, that's interesting. The uh, the composition of it, it actually feels a little bit more, uh, a little bit more kind of again sort of less thick um, than uh, it, it, it definitely than the the local hive. But let's give it a shot, folks. Let's see let's see if it lives up to the business. I unfortunately I can't do like a little drop. I have to. Man, oh man, it's just going. All right, let's try to. Oh, wow. That is so neat. I mean, everybody talked it up, right? And, like, I mean, everybody I knew. Everybody I talked to was like, this is, seriously, you're going to want, you want to try this. Um, and I trust those people for the most part. You know, they're reasonable individuals, typically. Uh, I didn't expect it to be so profoundly different, though. Like, because I'm very much the type of person where it's like, look, if, when it comes to, like, food and cooking and stuff... Obviously, if you can, you know, get really nice ingredients and stuff like that, you know. But I, I'm not typically the person who, like, I, I feel the need to go, like, super far out of my way to go over there and, like, you know, you talk to some people, it's like, you know, you haven't really tasted a tomato until you've had one out of your own garden right off the vine. Like, first of all, I've had tomatoes from gardens off the vine. They do taste better. In most things, is it going to be a huge difference? Probably not, but it does depend. Um, so I'm not usually that guy who's like, you know, like, oh, you have to, you know, go in for the, you know, as, as close as possible to the produce. It's like, dude, I'll go get some honey. It's honey, you know. But I have to admit, this is extremely different. Like, it's worlds apart from the other two. Um, which is interesting because, like, all of them have brought something unique to the uh, to the experience. This one, it's almost, and this is going to sound weird, it's almost not like honey. It's it's sweet for sure, but it's so weird. Like the the flavor profile on it, you're tasting like so many different things, and like the thing that to me tastes the most prominent there's almost like sort of an aniseed uh, kind of aspect to it. And if you're not familiar, aniseed um, or like like star anise or, or yeah, star anise or whatever it is, it's sort of almost like a little bit of a uh, kind of a licorice taste. Now, I personally love licorice. I'm a big fan. Um, but, and mind you, I'm not saying it tastes like licorice. I'm saying there's sort of notes of it. So I'm going to... I'm going to have to buy more of this because my plan is 
to go over there and actually, uh, I'm going to give some of this to, uh, oh, my friend's mom, because she loves to cook, and she's super awesome. Um, and then probably to my other friend's mom, because she's super awesome, too. So I'm going I'm to be paying for a lot of honey, because I definitely want some just, just for me now. It's so weird. Like, I, I've never tasted... All of these have been new experiences for me, but this is far and away the most. You can tell, and this is going to, again, it sounds contrived, it sounds, it sounds kind of presumptuous. You can tell that this is closer to the source than the other two. Um, and definitely more so than typical honey. Typical honey, it's obviously processed. It's specifically designed to taste a very, you know, specific way. This is, it's very, very different. This is not, I wouldn't consider this like multi-purpose, or like all-purpose honey. That's what I meant to say. Um, I think it, I think in the areas where it could be used, it would be a much stronger uh, honey or, you know, additive than like typical honey. Like, but it's, if you're looking for something strictly as a sweetener, I think typical honey would probably be better for that. But if you want something that's going to work better, give you more of an experience, this is definitely it. Um, it, it, it has like an earthiness to it. It's, it's so different. Like I cannot express, and I'm not, I promise, I'm not just going over there and upselling this, you know, because I, I like my maintenance guy. Granted, he does fix my machines when they don't work. So I'd like to keep him to my good graces. But, genuinely, this is just, it's worlds apart from the other two. Um, I mean, I think they, they each have their advantages. And I think that each one of them does something different. I think that the, the, the local hive stuff, again, to me, it feels like there's more going on, but it definitely feels the closest to honey. If I were going to use any of these three, specifically in a typical honey fashion, this would be great for that because it does have that that very profound, very significant sweetness. Uh, profound just sounded a little bit too much, but it also has delicate aspects of it too. So I could see going over there and you know putting it on you know a muffin or you know something like that, something where it's going to go over there and it's going to add something, but you're still going to want that typical honey flavor. I think this works great for that. The great value stuff, surprisingly, I, you know, it actually is still pretty damn solid and it's pretty good. And even though it's it's less complex than the other two, I do I do like its sort of blunt force trauma flavor to it. I really do think there's something nice to that. It wouldn't be as multi-purposeful as the other one though. Uh, for sure. I, I think this would be something where you would want it in specific instances that I am not nearly culinarily inclined enough to say, but, and then this is, this is just so, so unique and so interesting. I like, I, I couldn't tell you where to use it. I couldn't tell you. Um, not that, you know, I mean, unless you happen to know me or whoever who knows maybe i can go over there and you know help my uh my maintenance guy out and get him a whole business started um this is super good and it's so it's it again it's just it's unlike anything else i've ever had and it's i can't say enough good things about it folks for me out of the three this is clearly the winner no bullshit it is genuinely it's so weird and so unique i've never tasted anything quite like it it is exceptional, and it really does showcase the difference of being that much closer to the source. Because this is it. This is, this is essentially, short of me going over there and grabbing the beehive with my hand and eating it right there, this is, clo this is as close as you're going to get. Now, the other stuff, between these two, this one shocked me the most. So I kind of, I'm not saying it's a better honey, than this one 
but it did surprise me more. This one I was kind of expecting more from. This one kind of overachieved. So, and ultimately it becomes a question of this was, you know, twice as much as this one. Again, it depends on what you want from it. As a honey, yes, this is the better honey uh, than this one. But in terms of an actual flavor experience, this is a little bit more unique. So anyway, folks, this has been a very long video. Uh, five things before I get out of here. Have yourself a great rest of your day, spectacular rest of your week, monumental rest of your month, stupendous rest of your year. If you can go over there and have yourselves a truly maintenance guy honey rest of your life, because that's some phenomenal fucking honey right there, I tell you what. Uh, that'd be pretty fantastic. Two things before I get out of here, folks. Number one, try to bring some positivity in the world. It's not always possible. It is how I always appreciate it. But what you do if you can't do it all the time, I know I can't do it all the time. Here's what you do, folks. You try not to be an asshole. Okay, you're not always going to succeed. But some days, folks, you get some badass honey and it makes your day. But that's not going to be every day. So you have to try to mitigate the level of assholeness in your life, okay? I'm just saying. Very final thing, folks. Do the thing. Whatever the thing is for you, that's what I want you to go out and do. <laughs> maybe you're going to go over there and you're going to get your own beehive going. And you're going to go over there and make your own honey because, goddamn, that's some delicious-ass fucking honey right there. In fact, you know what, folks? Have that be the thing. Anyway, folks, that's going to do it for me. Uh, this is a long one. Sorry. I might even do a follow-up video just on the honey. So, bye.